Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today in gaming, Apex Season 8 is making bigger changes than expected. The stim glitch is back again in Warzone, PlayStation 5 scalpers manage the impossible, and much more. The gameplay trailer for Apex Legends Season 8 went live yesterday showcasing all the new content coming to the game. While it gave us some info about the new hero and items coming to the game, the big story is the map changes. They looked pretty extensive in the trailer, and today we learned the new version of Kings Canyon features an entirely new area that expands the overall size of the map. The new area is part of the crash site for Fuse's ship. While it doesn't sound like the map will be double its original size or anything, the new area should be a significant point of interest that offers a lot of verticality. Kings Canyon has seen a lot of changes since Apex launched, including a couple of total overhauls, but Season 8 seems like the most extreme makeover to date. Season 8 launches on February 2nd. There's also new evidence backing up the Switch port of Apex Legends that will launch alongside Season 8. A listing on Amazon Japan offers pre-orders for the Switch version and says it will be released on the 2nd. This backs up a recent leak that was buried in some marketing for Season 8 that said the Switch port would launch alongside the update. It's tough to say if the Switch port is actually coming out on the second or not. These recent posts seem almost like accidents and there's been no official word from the developers. But that's not unlike Apex. The game originally launched with basically no marketing also. Call of Duty Warzone just can't win. On top of players discovering a pay-to-win issue recently, a YouTuber has exposed a new way to stim glitch without actually exploiting the game. Assuming your squad manages to collect about $50,000, you can sit at a buy station, buy a bunch of ammo crates, and then use them to restock your stims. Done properly, you can survive long enough to win a match while in the gas. Obviously, it takes some coordination with your squad mates and it's not as straightforward as abusing an exploit, but it's just as effective and will likely be abused by a lot of players now that it's public knowledge. As for Warzone going pay to win, one could argue that it's been pay to win since Season 5. The Rose skin for a Rook is a matte black tactical suit that covers your entire body. Players can equip it and use it to disappear in shadowy areas. It's a powerful advantage that players can pay for. As for why it's become so prevalent all of a sudden, it's all thanks to the recent Twitch Rivals tournament. Many players in the tournament were using the skin and it got to the point that other tournament players were complaining about it. Clips from players are flooding social media showing lobbies full of people using the skin. The silver lining is you can't buy the skin anymore. It was a Season 5 Battle Pass reward given to players that had purchased the pass. It's not available in the Warzone store. It's now up to whoever's managing the game to tweak the skin's appearance. Raven Software haven't commented on the situation yet. Star Wars Battlefront 2 going free to play on the Epic Game Store recently crashed the servers. Why? Well, how does 19 million new players claiming the game sound? That's right, over 19 million people claim the game during Epic's promotion. The official EA Star Wars Twitter account broke the news explaining the promotion was causing all sorts of issues for the game servers and stability. EA eventually got things under control and it seems pretty stable now, but that is a massive influx of new players. It's unclear exactly how many copies of Battlefront 2 had sold before Epic's promotion. The most recent figure we have is that it just missed its 10 million units sold target in the first month or so of launch, with only 9 million units sold. While the number of units sold probably increased between launch and now, I think it's safe to say Epic's promotion more than doubled the number of players who own the game. It also speaks volumes about the success of the Epic Game Store as a platform. Obviously, free stuff will attract a lot of players, especially when there's a free Star Wars. But still, 19 million new players is an insane feat regardless of how big the platform or brand name is. Xbox Game Pass also had some insane growth recently. The subscription service is now boasting 18 million members. That's up by 3 million from last September. Microsoft recently announced a 100% price hike for Xbox Live, prompting widespread outrage. They quickly reversed the increase. It seems like they were trying to incentivize Game Pass over Xbox Live, but it backfired in spectacular fashion. PlayStation 5 scalpers did the impossible recently by buying out stock before it was even available for purchase. UK retailer Argos is saying that their entire stock of PlayStation 5 sold out before the listing went live. Argos quickly fixed the exploit the scalpers used, but by then it was too late. 
While some Argos employees said the company was canceling suspected scalper orders, many of these scalpers boasted about their purchases, showing their receipts as proof. Scalping in general has become a massive issue thanks to the pandemic, but what makes it even worse is retailers being unwilling to cancel orders placed by scalpers. Whether it's because they can't identify suspect purchases or don't want to lose out on sales is unclear. But it is clear that we are in a new era of online purchasing and scalpers are going to be a big problem unless we take actual action against them. Intel's first dedicated GPU is finally out. The Iris XE is being provided to OEM companies for sale in pre-built machines. The XE isn't exactly a gaming GPU. It's intended more for production workflows like CAD design and video editing. Intel are working on a gaming-focused GPU called the XE HPG. That GPU will likely support ray tracing and launches later this year. CSGO Team Vitality has been fined $10,000 for stream sniping during the Blast Premier Tournament. They defeated Team Liquid 2-0 during the event but were caught stream sniping during the match. The ESIC is saying their investigation found no foul play, meaning Vitality didn't use the information to their advantage, but they still have a strict zero-tolerance policy for this sort of thing and levied the fine. While the community is outraged over the incident, the ESIC SIC puts the blame more on the event organizers who had the broadcast live on a monitor in a room adjacent to where Vitality were playing their match. They could reasonably see the screen through the room's glass walls. Vitality accepted the punishment and will pay the fine. Halo Infinite's developers will provide monthly updates on their progress with the game starting this week. The game was most recently delayed to this fall. Since then, 343 have been promising more communication about the state of the game and their plans for its future. Infinite will be the first live service Halo game and they're planning on supporting it with new content for years to come. Its multiplayer will also be free to play. These are all significant changes for the franchise. Combined with the game's lackluster gameplay reveal trailer, many players are worried Infinite will be too much of a departure from the franchise's roots. The official mod kit for Cyberpunk 2077 is now available. These are essentially barebone utilities modders can use to create their own mod tools. They will be maintained alongside the game and CD Projekt Red will likely expand their capabilities over time. I wouldn't expect full-on official mod tools or anything, but given the hype surrounding Cyberpunk's mod scene, it's safe to say the community is only going to develop more advanced mods over time. The stealth adventure Lord of the Rings game Golem is delayed to 2022. It was supposed to launch this year and was revealed in a very impressive cinematic trailer that didn't show much about the game. Players will be able to pick dialogue options that reflect Golem's dual personalities, but beyond that there's little in the way of gameplay info. The devs haven't explained why the game is being delayed, just that it will take longer than expected to complete. Before we get to our final story today, I wanted to let you know we upload the day's top headlines as a short video on Twitter and our dedicated YouTube Shorts channel. If you're strapped for time but still want to stay in the loop with gaming news, follow us there. Links are pinned in the comments and description. Co-op survival game Monstrum 2 is entering Steam Early Access in two days. The game pits four players against a hostile environment and one player controlled monster. It's basically the thing mixed with the hidden and a bit of Left 4 Dead. The original announcement for the game says it's coming to next-gen consoles as well, so it'll likely launch on all platforms once its early access period is over. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.